This is Diesel Talk. You asked for it, so here it is. Diesel Talk, Episode 7. We have the normal three questions today. All from people that have commented uh, quite often on my videos. Two of them have to do with kind of C-15 horsepower related um, and nomenclatures with C-15s. And the third one, I actually have done a video clip and I cut off a chunk of a video I'm making to answer the question. And I think you'll really enjoy the third question. It's kind of a cool trick I learned on troubleshooting engines. Uh, so stay tuned through all the questions. And I thank you for watching the video. On to the questions. Okay, so Joel asks, here's a question on your next episode of Diesel Talk. I have a JEP C15 engine to replace a Detroit 60 series. I also have the opportunity of buying a KRA C15 engine. Which engine would be the best for pulling heavy loads all the time? Fuel economy is not a factor because power is what we want. Both engines are low mileage. Okay, so I get a lot of questions referring to, hey, what's the best C15? Or, you know, I'm pulling this engine out and I'm thinking of putting this one in and they'll give me a serial number prefix. So the three digit codes like the JEP or the KRA, that's referring to the first three digits of the serial number. And that kind of determines what engine model it is. But if you're going to ask me a question on horsepower or something, please give me the full serial number because I can actually look up what that engine was originally rated at at the factory if you give me the full serial number. But I'd never heard of these um, prefixes before. There's some pretty standard C-15s, at least in the US, that I'm used to working on, and these kind of come in all the time, and I'd never heard of either of these prefixes. And the normal prefixes, um, starting with kind of the older electronic C-15s, would be like a 1LW, a 5EK, a 6TS, then they went to 6NZs, MBNs, BXS, MXS, NXS, and then the SDP, which is the region engine. And those are the standard C15 serial numbers we're used to hearing. So I actually went on SIS and looked these prefixes up, and this is what they're in. So that kind of explains why this would be a higher horsepower engine. Now I didn't give me the full serial number so I couldn't tell what horsepower rating those particular engines were. But these are obviously military rated or um, Oshkosh also makes um, equipment for like fire trucks, um, emergency vehicles, you know, kind of specialty applications. So these aren't normal truck engines. Um, these, these probably, either of these would be good for a heavy haul application, but um, he wanted to know which one basically was higher horsepower. I would need the full serial numbers to tell you. So, you know, just going forward, when we get, you know, if you're going to ask me a question on your engine, please give me the full serial number, because people all the time, hey, I got a 3126, um, it's doing this, what's wrong with it? Um, if you do, if you're going to ask me questions, I don't mind the questions, just full serial number. All right, but uh, that was a good question. You made me look on SIS. So Norwood asks, an update, Pi, I'm Norwood from Louisiana. I'm an experienced and trained tech like yourself. I work for Cummins. But I do have a few questions on cat model names and such, like the numerical models versus the alphanumerical models. The difference between them and when about the differences in the models took place. Also, not only the inline sixes but v8s thank you very much okay so basically this question is referring to what the numbers mean for cat engines now cat used to have their own kind of well they do have their own nomenclatures for their engines however they went over when they went to the metric system for their nomenclatures they switched to kind of the c C engine like a C15, C7. Well, the older engines weren't like that. So let's go through and kind of talk about the terminology on the older engines and then what they turned into. So the first two digits in a cat nomenclature setup is kind of the size of the engine. So 
let's talk about a 3116. Well, the last digit in a 3116, the six refers to the cylinders. So it's a six cylinder, and typically it's an inline. Uh, at least I don't know of any V6s cats ever made. Um, if it's an eight, it's usually a V8. So what eight cylinders were ever in trucks? Well, there used to be a 3408, and that's a 34, so it's bigger than a 31. It's bigger than a 32 or a 33, which were also engines. Um, and there was also a 3208. So a 3208 would be smaller than a 3408, and that's the size of the engine, the displacement, but it would also be an eight cylinder. So let's start with the 3116, and we'll kind of work the progression up to its final model serial number. So a 3116 was a mechanical small seven liter engine. Um, this was pre-Huey, and then towards the end of its life, it actually had a retrofitted Huey setup, but very few of those were made. And then it went to a 3126. So it's still a six cylinder because it ends in six. It's still 31 series, which kind of refers to the displacement. And so it, it was basically the same block as the 3116, but now it was a 3126. And the 3126 was a Huey setup. That was the first Huey setup. Um, engines that cat made for the trucks so you had a 3126 now if there's a letter after the number that kind of refers to how early in that engine series it is so there was a 3126 B and that would be the early 3126s and then there was a 3126 E which was towards the end of the 3126s so this was around the mid or well mid 90s up to the early 2000s and then cat adopted the leader designations so instead of having a 3116 or 3126 now they referred to the displacement so the 3126 it was a seven liter engine now became the 30 well it was a 3126 now it became the c7 so C, um, Caterpillar, the seven. Seven is the leader of displacement. So that was kind of the whole run of that small seven liter uh, cat engine series from mid nineties up till uh, the C7S, which the C7S was the regen engine C7 common rail. And that was the whole range on the C7s on the smaller ones. Now, what about some of the other ones? Well, there were um, there was a 3176, and that engine kind of got scrapped, and then they had the C10 and the C9 and the C13 and the C12 and the C11. So the C9 was a 9 liter Huey setup, and then it ended with a C9S, which was a 9 liter common rail setup. The C10 and the C12 morphed into the C11 and the C13. C10 and C12, pretty much the same block, um, slightly smaller displacement between the two. Same with the C11 and the C13. Same block, um, same turbo setup, just smaller displacement. So let's get into the 3406s and the c15 so this is kind of what people are more interested in um there was also a 3208 which was an eight cylinder it was kind of a in between between the 3100s and 3400s but those were strictly mechanical they never made an electronic version of that so the 3400 series also that turned into the c15 but there was a 3408 and a 3406. So 3408 was an eight cylinder V8. Um, those were strictly mechanical though. They never made an electronic version of those. And then there was the 3406. So same nomenclatures for the 3406s. So that's an inline six, 3400 series. So if it's a 3406 and it's a B or a C, those are the letters to so be a 3406B, 
that would be a mechanical engine, no ECM. Same with the C model, no ECM. Then they went to the 3406E. So a 3406E is electronic. It has an ECM. It doesn't have a high pressure fuel pump. It uses the uh, electronic unit injectors, similar pretty much for the rest of the C15 line. And the 3406Es were the 1LWs and 5EKs and um, 6TS serial prefixes, which I was kind of referring to before. After the 3406E, there was a C15. But for some reason, it wasn't just C15. It was C-15. Don't know what the dash there is for, but it was C-15. So that was a CAT 15 liter engine. Then it went to C no dash 15. So if you just see C15, that's the later engines. And then there's C15 A certs, um, which once you get A cert, that's the twin turbos. And then the last model was the SDP C15, which was also A cert, but that had the regen on it. So that's kind of what they mean by the, the numbers and the C's and the liters. So if you see a C and then a number, that's the displacement. Cat makes a C-175. That is a humongous, it's like a 4,000 horsepower um, generator, industrial engine, and it's a 175 liter engine, C-175. Uh, there's also like uh, C-32s, things like that. So Cat's reference points are C something, and that's with reference to the liters of the engine. Opposed to the older models, which you had like 31 16s. 3208s, 3306s, 3406s, then you even had like 3516s, um, 3600 series engines, and that was pretty much the biggest cat ever made was a 3600. And those are huge, those are like in trains and power plants. So that was a lot of talk in there, but that's kind of, that describes the history of the cat um, nomenclatures for their engines. So if you hear one of those numbers, you should be able to tell what it is from now on. Okay. Okay, so Norwood asked me a bunch of other questions referring to the Cummins regen systems and what compares to the CAT regen systems. And he wanted me to answer those as well. Unfortunately, I don't know that much about the Cummins regen systems. Um, I know they run the DEF, which I kind of, I do understand the DEF setups, but I don't know how Cummins does their regens and their DPF. Um, setups. I, I'm really good on CAT, but not so much on Cummins, so I'm not going to answer that question in this Diesel Talk episode. He knows a lot more about Cummins than I do, um, and I know a lot about CAT, so I can't really compare the two, okay? On to the next question. Okay, so Jack asks, I have a 97 motorhome with either a 3126 or a 3116 in it. That broke down about two and a half months ago in Maryland, and it's been there ever since. The mechanic who's been working on it is stumped. He replaced the Huey pump, but the motor will start with starter fluid and not run after that. The Huey pump apparently made no difference. I'm looking for any suggestions you may have. Okay, so I get a lot of comments like this, and I really like to help people and try to answer them, but... Like in this instance, the owner isn't with the RV. I can't talk to the mechanic who's working on it. He's obviously replaced the Huey pump, but it doesn't sound like he's familiar with the systems. Um, but the engine won't start, and a very common failure point for engines not starting is the ECM's dead, or it's not getting power. And it's really hard unless you have a computer with CAD ET to communicate with that engine and see, hey, is it trying to fire the injectors or not? Because you don't know. Um, the, you know, on a C15, you can see if the rocker arm is moving the injector, but you still don't know if the ECM is trying to fire the injector. Well, let me show you a little trick. So what we have here is an inductive voltmeter that you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. And when it turns on, it'll turn on with either a blue or a green light. Now you're probably wondering why I have this AC voltmeter and how the heck it's supposed to help me troubleshoot a DC ran diesel engine. Well, if you don't know how these work, basically if you put them next to a circuit with voltage, 
it will beep and light up and tell you, hey, there's voltage here. You know, don't bite into this cord. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the injector harness going into the valve cover base on a cat engine. Now, cat engines, the ECM jumps up the voltage quite a bit, up to 120 volts DC to try and fire the injectors. So let's crank the engine and see if it lights up. So that's lighting up, which tells us, hey, the injectors are trying to be fired. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? At least I thought so, because really you can't back probe those um, injector wires. Uh, the ECM can supply up to 120 volts to your injectors to fire the solenoids. So you can't use like a test light. It could blow up your test light. Um, you can't use a volt meter, like a multimeter because multimeters can't pick up voltage readings that quickly and display them. So I figured um, my old TC showed me how to do that. And that can kind of tell you, you know, if you suspect your ECM's either not powered or you think the ECM's bad, you know, put that tool in there crank it is it lighting up at all if it's not lighting up at all the ECM is the only thing that supplies voltage to your injector harness so if it's not lighting up at all you know you either have a power issue going to that ECM or that ECM is bad so at that point you know it'd be a good idea to you know check your power leads going into the ECM maybe pull that ECM off and have it tested okay well that is all the questions for this episode of diesel talk I hope you enjoyed the questions and uh, if you did like and subscribe and leave me some comments. All right, thank you.